Searching for the Northern Lights is one of the most frustrating things that you will ever experience in your life, but also one of the most spectacular things when you finally see them. We were in Iceland, Finland, and Norway, and basically the entire purpose of this long trip in the winter was to find the Northern Lights in each location. And we did! We found them in all three places! So now we want to tell you about the frustrating experiences that we had and tell you about the best places to go so that you can have the most success. Let's start from the beginning, which was in Reykjavik, Iceland. We decided to stay in the capital city of Iceland because that's where the majority of people live and it just has everything that you want to do there. The good thing about Iceland is pretty much every single tour company that I looked at offered you to go as many times as you needed to until you saw the lights. So when we went, we actually didn't see it on our first night when we took the bus out of the city, stood in the freezing cold wind and rain. Day one of trying to find the Northern Lights. We've been out here for a very long time and I think I've lost feeling in all of my extremities. We did not see the Northern Lights tonight, but we are gonna keep trying. Hopefully we see them eventually. That part was honestly miserable, guys. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it was such, yeah, look, the first night, considering there was a very small chance to see them. And we knew that going in, but we're like, we just have to do it since the company was going to allow us to go the very next night and all of the following nights for free. Well, not free, but we paid. That was included in our price that we just figured we have to go our very first night that we're there and then the second night and then the third night until we see them. It is day two of trying to find the Northern Lights in Iceland. We dressed in even warmer clothing this time because we were so cold. So cold, because you just sit out there for two hours and it's like 30 degrees, maybe colder, and you're just sitting ducks. It is even colder tonight. The weather is looking promising. The Aurora forecast looked a little bit better. We're really hoping it's tonight. You can see it, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I am freaking out. I am freaking out. So, seeing the Northern Lights in Iceland, easy or not? I would say we saw them on our second night. So, But, I, yeah, that was the only time, the entire time that we were there, that the lights actually showed themselves. That's, that's very true. I heard other people just say like, we've gone out for three nights in a row and we did not see them. That was like near the end of our time in Iceland. And so we just happened to go on the night where they actually revealed themselves to us. And it was a long time coming, guys. Like, you gotta hustle to see those lights. Like, I feel like especially in Iceland, like, you gotta work for it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the tour companies do a ton of research the day of to make sure they're trying to take you to the best spot. But when you're staying in Reykjavik, there's only so much driving they can do because they still have to get you all the way back to Reykjavik that same night. And so you're standing out there in the cold for like an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah, I'm freezing. It's time to go back inside. So yeah. to answer your question on if it's easy to see them in Iceland, I wouldn't say it's easy. I would yeah. say it's, it's pretty difficult. But I thought we had a pretty good experience the day that the Northern Lights were actually in the sky. Yeah, they were, I will say this for the Northern Lights in Iceland, they were hard to find. And it was cold standing out in the wind, in the rain. The night that we saw them, it was actually raining and the clouds just <laughs> happened to part at the exact right time so that we could see the lights. The lights, once that they revealed themselves, they were all over the sky. They were like moving and dancing and like, we actually saw bits of green, which if you don't know about the Northern Lights, they actually aren't super green when you just see them with your naked eye. The cameras do a lot better job of like letting all the light in, so they actually aren't as green when you see them in person. But the ones that we saw in Reykjavik were kind of green, but they kind of just look like straight clouds. So what we would do differently if we went back to Iceland to go find the Northern Lights, 
I think if you want the best chance to go see them, we would probably have rented a car and then drive out to a hotel or something like out in the countryside, something like far away from Middle, the city lights. Yeah. But if you want to go with these tour companies, I mean, there's so many people going. And so it's a very common thing to do when you're visiting Iceland. But make sure that you go to the tour company that lets you go until you see them. Because there was like one or two that don't do that. And I don't know why you would ever take a tour like that when there are so many tour companies in Iceland that lets you do it until you see them. So, Iceland overall, once we saw the Northern Lights, it was really, really cool and there was a really good show, but it was very, very hard to find them. So, the next destination that we went to to try to find the Aurora Borealis was Finland, and specifically in Lapland, Rovaniemi. Yeah, you can't really see the lights from like Helsinki or like southern Finland that much, so if you're planning a trip to Finland to see the lights, you definitely need to go north to Lapland. Rovaniemi sits basically right on the Arctic Circle, so that's about how north you need to be. Reykjavik actually sits a little bit south of the Arctic mm -hmm. Circle, so that's why it's not too easy to see them, but when you get a little bit more north, then you get the better chances. But Finland, we were there for a pretty long time, but we got to see them twice. We saw them once in Iceland and twice in Finland, so they were a little bit easier to see in Finland, but I will say that the show wasn't as good as it was in Iceland. Yeah, like you were saying earlier in the video, there wasn't a whole lot of like dancing lights mm -hmm. in the sky. There wasn't like s like color shooting across the sky. It was just like kind of like pretty bold color, but it was just like kind of there. Yeah, it was just like, it was really cool. It was really, <laughs> really cool. And especially the second night we saw them. The first night we just happened upon them, which was crazy. Jacob and I were just chilling in our little cottage and then Jacob was like, oh my gosh, the KPs are so high tonight. It's going to be such a good night to see the Northern Lights. And like, we have been thinking this all day. So I was like, I'm just going to put on some slippers in my pajamas and run outside real quick because I kind of feel like we're going to see them. I came around the corner from our cottage and I just saw this little thing moving in the sky. I ran inside to get my phone, grabbed my phone, put it in the sky. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are the Northern Lights. So I called Jacob and I was like, Jacob, run, run, run. We have the Northern Lights out here. But both times it was just like a rainbow in the sky. It, all, it literally looks like maybe like ever so slightly green, just like a little cloud in the sky that's like more streamlined. Which, I mean, that was really cool that they were there. So we had plenty of time to just like take pictures. I mean, the first time we were just like at our accommodation, we walked outside and there they were. So that was really cool. I was in my slippers and pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> the slippers. <laughs> I didn't even have socks on before and made Jacob bring me socks. I cannot believe that we just saw the freaking Northern Lights just like like by ourselves like oh I'm just so happy right now then the second time that we did see them yeah we were with a small group tour I think there was like seven or eight people mm -hmm. in there including us and yeah so that was that was a fun experience too because yeah. we set out north from Rovaniemi in the city center and we drove probably like a good two hours I think north. two or three hours north like yeah. we drove for a long time to find the light. I'm freaking out, you guys. We can see them so clearly. It is a huge rainbow across the sky. I will say, we saw them twice in Rovaniemi, but the second time we drove pretty much all the way up to like Katilla area. But then we actually went to stay in Levy, which is up north like two hours. And there was so many clouds that even though we were super far north where we saw them the second time in Finland, we didn't see them at all when we were staying up there because of the clouds. Yeah, that is the bad part about the Lapland area in general. Like we've stayed in Lapland, Finland twice now for like extended periods of time. And it's just been so cloudy, which is great because like- We you, love the snow. You don't just go there for the Northern Lights. Mm -hmm. You go there cause it's like snowy and you might even yeah. want to go skiing. And so like that, that's all great, but it makes it harder to see the lights in the sky. For sure. So easy or not easy in Lapland? I'd say like, it's kind of in the middle. Yeah. Like, like I think easier than Iceland, especially because when you're in Lapland, like the worst part about looking for the lights in Iceland was that it was so windy. And like, honestly, that made it 
not miserable because we saw the lights, but like it was kind of miserable there for a <laughs> while when you're just standing out there for like two hours, like the wind is just whipping you. When we mm -hmm. went out in Lapland, there really wasn't any wind. It was we, extremely cold. It was cold, but we sat by a fire. We roasted sausages. You can get that when you go with a group tour. There's just not gonna be sausages out in the wild, <laughs> but. <laughs> but they have these little coaties that like, you can just go to and they're public and there's a little fire pit. So mm -hmm. you could do it by yourself if you wanted to. It's definitely a good experience in Lapland. And of course, if you do go with a tour and especially like a small group tour, then you can drive as far as you need to to get away from the clouds. But that is like the main problem, the clouds. Even if the KPs are high, if the clouds are there, in Iceland, Finland, Tromso, it doesn't matter. You can't see the lights. But then, after Finland, we went to Tromso, Norway. You guys. <laughs> If you want to see the Northern Lights, go to Tromso. Tromso is just so far north. Like it's one of the largest cities that's actually like one of the Northern cities yeah. in the world. And it sits right on this like perfect ring. I forget what it's called. Like the ring, like the Northern Lights makes a ring at the top of the earth. And Tromso just sits at the exact perfect place. You can see the Northern Lights in Tromso when there is zero KPs. Like <laughs> that is how crazy Tromso is. When there's is. basically like no activity in the sky or it doesn't really register, it's still possible to see them. In Iceland, we saw them once. In Finland, we saw them twice. In Tromso, we saw them like seven times. We didn't even mean to. We would just be like on a boat or walking through town and we'd just be like, oh, there's the Northern Lights. We looked outside and everyone kept looking up and looking up and this happens a lot here because there's like lights up there. And so I was like, are all these people just looking at the lights? And then I was like, no, there's way too many people looking up. And we saw the Northern Lights again. It's like straight above us and it's in the city. It's like dancing though. This is crazy. It's kind of hard to see it because there's so many lights around us, but Wow. Tromso just made it too easy. Like, we didn't have to work for it at all. And like, part of seeing the Northern Lights, I feel like is you gotta work for it a little bit. But yeah. Tromso didn't make us work. Yeah, the first time that we saw them in Norway, it was just insane. The captain just announced you could see the Northern Lights and look at how bright they are. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. This is crazy. No, I, this is so cool. On the water. Oh man. We were on a boat mm -hmm. to go whale watching and orca watching with the orcas and the humpback whales in the Norwegian fjords. And we just already had such a great day and we just like weren't really expecting it, but it got super dark really early. 2 p.m. <laughs> just because like we were there like in the middle, like dead of winter, like some of the shortest days in the calendar year. And then like there they were at like 2, 3 p.m. And, and they lasted for like four hours. We just sat on the end of the boat and saw the best Northern Lights show. Like it kind of looked like we were getting abducted by aliens. I literally just imagined God like painting in the sky. Like there was swirls, there was green, there was yellow. It was all over the sky. I can't even describe like how frustrated we were when we got to Iceland and we went out the first night and we didn't see them and we had been in Finland the past year and we didn't see them and we were like, we're never gonna see the Northern Lights. And then we get to Tromso and it's just like, oh, every night, there they are. <laughs> and we were also in another like uh, small town. It's called Samurai. I believe it's its own little like island. There's not very many people living there. There's one hotel. And that means that there's not very many city lights out there. Mm. And so you can walk outside and you can point your camera up at the sky and you're like, oh, they're out. They're out. No joke. We they're can see freaking them. freaking out. Look, you can see them on my camera right there. No way. That's so crazy. And then you can take some really cool pictures. That is a good point. When you're in Tromso, we did see the Northern Lights in the actual city of Tromso, but two of the best shows we saw was one on the boat so far away from the city and two when we were in Samaroy and there's no lights there. What we would do 
differently if we wanted to see them more in Trom. So I don't know, just get away from the city lights. Yeah. That's pretty much that's pretty much it. Yeah. Go on a boat. I think that was the best experience because you're just so far away from the lights. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty with the mountains and the fjords. If you're staying in one place for a week, there is a decent chance that you're going to see them. But of course, our favorite, Tromso, Norway. Just yeah. like a, a big city where a lot of people can go to just go on a vacation or travel there and you got a good chance. But of course, if you go to any of these places and you don't see the Northern Lights, you're still going to have an amazing time because all of these places were just incredible and we loved our arctic winter we missed the sun but we got plenty of sun now in our new destination which if you stick around i'll show you in like one minute we hope this video is going to make your experience of trying to see the lights a little less frustrating hopefully we gave you some really good tips if you're hoping to visit one of these three places so now the reveal of where we are now Ta -da -da! thailand now I'll flip the camera around so you can Let's see our see. view. So yes, we're trying to go to as many places around the world as possible. So if you want to follow along, hit subscribe and keep watching. Guys, this Thailand series is going to be so good. Okay, bye.